Are you a male patient who's suffering from hair loss and you're taking hair loss drugs like finasteride or detasteride or even spironolactone or ketoconazole? Well, were you aware that there is a rare side effect of these drugs that is called gynecomastia, where you develop breast tissue? Well, in today's video, I'm going to tackle this question by one of my followers who has experienced gynecomastia development of breast tissue after having taken finasteride for a short period of time. So in this video we'll cover what this particular phenomenon is, how to manage it and also so importantly how to rule out some other sinister causes of gynecomastia which is so important that you're aware of. Let's dive right into it. So what on earth is gynecomastia and why does it occur in men? Well gynecomastia is the development of breast tissue in males and it can occur in some 50% of men in their lifetime. It occurs because there's an increase in estrogen in the tissue so then you get feminization. So feminization obviously in a male body would be development of breast tissue. This occurs at three different points in a male's life or can occur at three different points in a male's life. One, when they've just come out of the mother's womb and they've got lots of estrogen and circulating in the system. Two, when they're going through puberty and you get a change in the hormones. And three, in older adulthood where testosterone levels start to drop off and then estrogen can have a bit of an effect. So this is development of breast tissue and it can occur also secondary or because of taking certain drugs. Certain drugs like finasteride and dutasteride can have this rare side effect, which we'll jump into next. So why does this occur to men who are taking drugs like finasteride or dutasteride to treat hair loss? Well, as we know, finasteride and dutasteride block the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Now, that is an important component of treating hair loss for some 90-95% of men because DHT is the hormone which is shrinking the follicle and leading to miniaturization and that miniaturization effect of the follicle leads to having thinner and finer hair which progressively over time leads to a follicle producing no hair at all. So, that is why men are treated with finasteride and testosterone. but what are the implications on the body and how does that lead to gynecomastia in a very small number of people? Well, the analogy I like to give my patients is testosterone has various different pathways in which it can be converted and testosterone also has various different pathways and if which it doesn't go down one, it can go down another. So the analogy I give is testosterone is like traffic. You've got a bunch of cars on one side of a bridge and there is various different bridges that these cars can take to get over to the destination. Now, one of those pathways or one of those bridges would be conversion to DHT, so a DHT bridge. Now, one of those other bridges is the aromatase pathway. And the aromatase pathway is where testosterone is actually converted into estrogen. So this is the estrogen bridge. So what happens when you take a drug like finasteride or testosterone and you block that DHT bridge? Well, when you block that DHT pathway, and you get a buildup of about 12 to 15% of testosterone in the system because less of it is converted into DHT, or less of it can take that DHT bridge, well then you have more testosterone in the system that needs to go somewhere else. So, like a bunch of people trying to get home in their cars, they're gonna take different bridges. And so what bridges does this testosterone take? Well, it takes the estrogen bridge. And so then the problem with that is that, well, if you've got an increase of testosterone from say 12% if you're taking finasteride and it's up to double that, so 24 to 30% if you're taking dutasteride, you have more testosterone to be converted into other things. And so it gets converted into estrogen. The other thing is that finasteride and dutasteride work on these bridges that are actually located within the skin and the breast tissue. So because there's going to be more estrogen in the breast tissue due to this testosterone going down this estrogen pathway bridge while you then can develop breast tissue. Now it only occurs in about 0.1 to 0.4 percent of men who take finasteride or dutasteride uh, but when it occurs it is really really important to understand how to manage it. Now typically it will only occur in one breast but it can develop in both breasts. There is a report such as in this case here that reviewed nine different cases of gynecomastia caused by low dose one milligram of finasteride and it was persistent gynecomastia. Now, 60% of these cases resolved without needing any further intervention. However, 40% of these cases did persist. So what should you do 
If you notice you develop breast tissue after taking finasteride or detasteride or even other drugs like spironolactone or ketoconazole. Well, first off, it's so important to cease the drug and seek medical guidance because there are some sinister causes of gynecomastia that need to be ruled out that actually might be happening at the same time and just coincidentally you're taking finasteride or detasteride or one of these other agents so it's really important that these other potential causes of gynecomastia are ruled out which i'll talk about in just a sec now gynecomastia will resolve for the majority of people within the first year now if it doesn't resolve within the first year with medical management, then it may well mean that you have to have surgery to remove the breast tissue. And if it's not resolved or investigated within one year, well, there's a chance that that breast tissue will fibrose or harden, which would mean that then the only thing that would actually remove that tissue would unfortunately be surgery, such as in this case here, detailed in this paper. So what are the sinister causes of gynecomastia that need to be ruled out? Sinister causes can be gynecomastia caused by tumors within the body, gynecomastia caused by things like testicular cancer, gynecomastia caused by other things that you might be ingesting or other medications that you could be on, like digoxin or methotrexate, or some of these things that people take for heart conditions or things like rheumatoid arthritis. There are other things like cannabis use, alcohol, and a bunch of others that can also lead to development of breast tissue. It is so important that you have these looked into by your healthcare professional in the context even of taking finasteride and testosterone, these other things need to be ruled out. The other thing that is so important is that if you do develop gynecomastia, it's worth having some imaging because 1% of breast cancers are actually accounted for by male patients. So there is a chance, a rare chance, but there is a chance that if you're developing gynecomastia or breast tissue, then it could also be cancerous. Now that's not to spook you, the odds are it's incredibly low, but it is something that this should be looked into and it's easy enough to have an ultrasound, to scan the tissue, to screen the tissue, to see that there's no cancerous formations in there. It's worth taking the extra step, but this is something that your healthcare professional can help you with. So how would it typically be managed? Well. A lot of these cases will self-resolve after having ceased the medications that is causing it. However, it might well be that an individual may be placed on a selective estrogen receptor modulator or a serum, which will actually reduce the glandular tissue medically. There are other medications that can actually block the aromatase pathway, which again will reduce the effect of estrogen causing breast tissue. However, these aren't necessarily things that you want to be taking long term in the context of continuing to take finasteride. So taking finasteride or tetasteride to block the conversion of testosterone to DHT to improve hair growth or reduce the loss and then taking a second drug to then block the potential effects of testosterone being converted to estrogen. If you think about it from a long term perspective, that's probably not something that you want to lean into, although this is for you to discuss with your doctor. However, me personally, I wouldn't want to be taking a raft of different medications and blocking different hormones for a lifetime. If you were taking one of these estrogen blockers short term to reduce glandular tissue, that's one thing. But taking it ongoing in a bid to try and counter the effects of finasteride or testosterone really needs to be considered seriously. So. Like all medical problems, there's either conservative management where you do nothing or just watch and wait, which is management in itself because a lot of things can self-resolve. You do medical management where you can use medications or pharmaceutical agents or supplements, etc., to reduce the problem or, or hopefully remedy the issue. And then last resort is surgical intervention. So I hope this video helps. If you do have gynecomastia, it is something that can be managed, but it's just so, so, so important that you seek medical counsel. So see your doctor because there are things that can lead to breast tissue development, even in the context of taking finasteride or detasteride, that can be more sinister in nature. So please do seek medical counsel. Hope this video helps. See you again next week. Cheers.